Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Microsoft Patch Tuesday, of course, top of the news. Now, the number of vulnerabilities is pretty small. Microsoft fixed 56 vulnerabilities, 11 of which are rated critical. One has already been exploited and six were previously disclosed. But what's really kind of interesting with this particular patch set are three different vulnerabilities that all have a CVSS score of 9.8. The first one, Microsoft DNS Server, another remote code execution vulnerability. Last one we had was back in July, if you remember. And back then, well, uh, we sort of lucky, was never really exploited. I don't think there was ever sort of a full remote code execution exploit released. Microsoft does rate exploitation likely for this vulnerability. CVE 2021-2407-8. The second interesting vulnerability is a remote code execution in the TCP IP stack. And yes, it affects source routing. Source routing is one of those features you probably should block at your routers. Don't really see it used for anything good these days or for the last 20 or so years. Essentially, source routing allows the sender of a packet to define which routers a packet will be routed through. And uh, many routers will outright just drop the packets or at least ignore it. Windows will also ignore the option, but it will still return an ICMP message indicating that it denied the request. And apparently there is a remote code execution here as the packet is being parsed. The real workaround here is probably just not to allow any IPv4 options. Uh, the official workaround is to block packets that have uh, the source routing option set. And then third, well, IPv6. If IPv4 still has vulnerabilities, IPv6, of course, can't stand behind. CVE 2021-24094, which is uh, patched here, does allow remote code execution via oddly fragmented packets. So overall, the DNS vulnerability is probably the one that people should watch most here, but these are all issues you definitely should patch quickly. Now, there's a fourth vulnerability that also got a CVSS score of 9.8, but well, it affects uh, the fax service in Windows. The one vulnerability that's already being exploited in the wild is a Windows Win 32K elevation of approach vulnerability. Well, uh, they're a dime a dozen, so uh, wouldn't really worry about that already being used too much. And again, uh, just a privilege escalation of vulnerability. Probably also of note is uh, two vulnerabilities in Visual Studio Code that were addressed uh, now recently. You have seen vulnerabilities like this uh, being exploited against security researchers. These vulnerabilities, according to Microsoft, have not yet been exploited, not yet been disclosed, so likely different vulnerabilities. So first thing to do is patch your DNS servers and then double check your routers, your firewall, that you don't allow any IP options and well, uh, then just patch. Another little quirk with this particular update, Microsoft as usual published a blog post about this update. However, the link to the blog post apparently spelled Microsoft with two O's uh, leading to a typo squatting uh, site. Luckily, nothing malicious on the site and looks like just a simple, honest error. And then we got a real interesting and very dangerous attack uh, that was uh, discovered uh, by security researcher Alex uh, Burson together with Justin Gardner. The two had the idea what happens if a company, and that's uh, quite common, uses an internal repository for packages together with the normal public repository. So for example, for Python, when you're typing pip in 
install and uh, then uh, the package name. What happens if uh, the particular package exists internally and externally? And well, it turns out that not just in Python, but also with Ruby, with uh, NPM, the external package is often preferred over the internal one. So what they essentially did and uh, what earned Alex a bunch of money with bug bounties is to figure out internal package names that large comp companies are using and then create external public packages with the same name. And indeed, these packages were then included as uh, these companies rebuilt their software. I have to say they were very careful in how they did it. Uh, they only really then had during uh, the install process a uh, DNS lookup that they used to basically get information whether or not uh, the attack worked. And yes, it worked. And uh, there is now also a white paper from Microsoft describing how to prevent uh, this particular problem. But essentially, you do want to make sure that you do prefer internal packages over external ones or best just to have one internal repository that you're using for all of your packages that you're using to build your software. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.